Hello people, welcome back to Lenovo Late Night IT, where insiders share stories straight from the trenches. And by trenches, I mean like cubicles and co-working spaces, maybe your backyard with a virtual background. I'm your host, Baratunde Thurston, and today's episode is all about edge computing. We're gonna ask such important questions like, what is edge computing? And then deep follow-ups like, yo, seriously, what's edge computing? Here to help us is Stephanie Atkinson, founder and CEO of Compass Intelligence, a leading tech advisory and market research firm. For more than 20 years, Stephanie has offered strategic insights, market intelligence, and industry forecasting to tech companies, execs, and government leaders all across the globe. Also joining us in the garage is Satya Jayadev, a senior IT executive and CIO at Skyworks Solutions, a company that manufactures state-of-the-art semiconductors. He's also a huge fan of stand-up comedy and is a regular at comedy clubs. So if he doesn't laugh at my jokes, <laughs> you know what's up. Hello, Satya. Hello, Stephanie. Welcome to Hi. the table. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Satya, how are you? So far, so good. So far, so good. Well, <laughs> since you're so good, I'm going to start with you. What's edge computing? Well, edge computing is, um, is actually computing that happens... Uh, uh, at, the, at the place where the action happens, like your phone. When you look at a phone, it, it actually opens up your phone and action happens right there on the phone. That's an example of an you know, edge computing device. Most of those in the industry, you know, we, we think about cloud versus edge, and that's really the conversation that's been taking place. Cloud, you're sending that data far away. Well, edge is, okay, we're gonna take all of this great software and hardware, we're gonna bring it as close as we can to the data collection point. Where the action Instead happens. Instead of moving yeah. out, so yes, so give me one or two examples of edge computing at work. Okay, so let's, I think the biggest one that a lot of those in the industry are really talking about yeah. is in the manufacturing facility. You're on a factory floor, okay. right? We now have an outage, what are we going to do? Mm. We need real-time, actionable intelligence. Mm -hmm. We've all had this history of leveraging cloud technology, which yeah. doesn't really give us that real-time, it's, it's really all about real-time information. Could, you could see how those, those edge devices could be sending a lot of data for analytics, right? But those devices have to be smart enough to also make some judgment calls. Like, let's say you're manufacturing these cups. Okay. And one of these cups is faulty. I'm not going to be sending this data to the cloud and bring it back in by the mm. time that that cup is gone. So I'm going to go make a, make a judgment call there and say, that, that, that's got to go out. So the amount of artificial intelligence that's built into these compute devices is yeah. just phenomenal. Edge cloud. Um, Stephanie, is fog the new cloud? We're going to have solutions that require some things to be pushed out to the cloud and some things are going to be in between, okay. which is the fog. And then, you know, there's all these hybrid solutions that Wait, are... Wait, fog is a real thing? I was joking. Oh, no, no, you're... <laughs> it is real. Fog computing is it an is actual real. term in we're our not, industry. No, we're not, we're not... I'm not signing up for that. All right, you <laughs> named it. I just got used to cloud computing <laughs> and now we're fog computing? Yes. What's next? Mist computing? <laughs> Mist. Wait, is Mr. Real Cloudy? Thing no. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I found the edge of the joke. Partial thank cloudy you. today. <laughs> what industries do you think are best suited to benefit from edge computing? What do you see? For me, the edge in edge computing, first and foremost, is going to kick off. It's taking off in the industrial sector okay. to have visibility into our operations. So think about um, oil and energy. Mm -hmm. You think about manufacturing, industrial distributors, those guys that are really moving the supply chain. That's where a lot of the hub is, but some exciting and new opportunities in healthcare and medical. Okay. And when we think about remote patient care, we can't send that to the cloud. We have information that could be life threatening or Life's very later. critical yeah, to yeah. for disease management. But again, you think about what's happening. Is it critical? Um, is it real-time intelligence that I need? Um, how important is the information? How often am I pinging that data? What do I need to do with the data? Yeah. And then who should be alerted? And like you said, which is really cool when you have artificial intelligence and machine learning and all these new algorithms is that particular hardware software is actually making a decision and acting on it yeah. without human intervention. That's the cool thing. Um, I want to rewind and just get your take, Satya, on mm -hmm. whether you see it from an industry basis or sets of activities. Where is edge computing most useful right now? We are already experiencing edge computing. Like even at home, 
just turn off your Wi-Fi and see how many I, devices I will you never can do access. That. Exactly. I, will never do that. <laughs> I mean, you cannot access your thermostat. You can access your refrigerator. You can access a lot of things, yeah. right? Because or you can access them, but you can't remotely monitor them. You can't uh, look at your uh, your your you know cameras. Yeah. So edge computing is starting to rule even our own homes. Mm. So from a workplace perspective, it's. Uh, like, uh, you know, think, uh, think about these, like, you know, uh, critical uh, valves that are, that, are, that are controlling some processes. How would you monitor them? Yeah. And those things are now having a lot of edge devices. And again, at some point, there will be edge computing devices. I'm hearing a lot of talk about decisions being distributed to the edge, right. monitoring. And I'm hearing that overlap with language like critical, mm -hmm. life-threatening, life-saving. So how do you think about not just the balance between edge and cloud, but between you know, device-made decisions and human. Things have happened these past two years that have really disrupted the way we work. Yeah. But not only that, we're leaning more on technology because we don't have everyone where they used to be, which was in the office, yeah. where all of our operations are, where the assets are. That shift means that some people will need to have they need to be reskilled, retrained, and moved into other positions, but yeah. those positions are going to be there. And in, and in many cases, it might be that they're actually managing some of the edge solutions and mm. technology and things that are happening because we need people. And we, what we need is we need analytical thinkers, people that can yeah. think about the business and what's important to the business, the yeah. bottom line, but also have a technology understanding. You don't need to to know all, about all the widgets and the I's and O's and the X, you know, you don't need to have all of that. But if you understand technology and the importance of it to the business and how yeah. it really supports the operations, I think that's what we're needing. I mean, driving sometimes is a very mundane job. You're sitting, you're, you're looking at the road and you're driving for miles and hours together, mm -hmm. right? So to me, they are, they are, they are, they are, they're trying to focus humans towards more of a knowledge-based uh, uh, you know, role. Anything that is more mundane, anything that's just, just uh, you know, driven by, uh, by a, a, a force of habit will be changed to, uh, to machines doing that. I, I really don't know uh, yeah. how, why people need an autonomous car because I'm, I'm very uh, scared of doing that, right? Yeah. When my car makes its own turn, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I have to be very careful with this. I thought I was the driver. Exactly. What's the point of this license? Right. <laughs> So I think uh, we are seeing a shift in the way that uh, things are happening around, yeah. and, and this shift is becoming is coming so fast that it's actually exponential. I also heard about about the smart pacemakers, right? Mm. Can actually send information to the doctors, and the doctors can monitor you from wherever you are. Right. So you are basically in an ICU unit day in day out for 24/7, right. 365 days a year. That's phenomenal. That's yeah. that's great. But what if it sends you wrong information? What if it, it's supposed to do something? Right, that's scary. Yeah. But that's as scary as, as sitting in an autonomous car and letting the car drive you off the cliff or whatever. Yeah. So I, I think that's why um, it's also cultural. Mm. My son is fine with that. He's like, that's what the car is supposed to do. <laughs> Let it go. So that generation is now getting into this, right? Yeah. They're gonna be more trustworthy of those systems. They're gonna be more trusting these systems to make those decisions. So as things change, I think as culturally as we bring in that attitude, we're gonna see a lot of things that's gonna be autonomous. Yeah. That was the, the, the gentlest way to communicate the robot takeover. Cognitive <laughs> abilities are going to shift between us and those robots. That, they trade you well. That's good. <laughs> way to work for the robots. Right. Um, well, I ha wanted to add to that yeah, because please. this is, I, I think about, you, were, you asked the question around why do we need our car to drive itself? Well, yeah. it's not just about that. So it's very okay. important. One of the biggest problems that major cities have is traffic. And the road what? rage and the fighting. <laughs> All of that, right? Yeah. Maybe they're delivering a heart transplant, a heart itself, and they need to be routed right through. Yeah. The, the, there are a lot of moving factors outside. So when we think about that autonomous vehicle and then the rest of the city outfitted with different sensor systems, mm. lighting, um, the traffic management, all of those things are going to be working in conjunction with each other. We're building something very complex. I mean, humans are complex, right? We have a network of people making decisions every day about traffic or routing or medical decisions. But the idea that we would multiply the participants in that set of decisions by 10 or 100, all these devices now weighing in. How do you coordinate that level of networked decision making across all these intelligent edge devices? It's just a matter of managing uh the need, the purpose in, in all of these edge devices that, that we have, right? I mean, even, even at home, uh, you got eight cameras, but you got one app now. So the sophistication 
of systems are also moving along with these mm. with these other devices too. So you you've got all of that. Uh, I mean, the intent is to make it simple enough that you don't have to see the back end of it. So the whole concept of you know edge devices is going towards that direction. Okay. One example I can also give you is the now they are actually looking at uh, the prospect of of doing surgeries remotely. So you have a robot that's at the operating table, okay. and the doctor is uh, actually putting on his uh, um, uh, augmented reality, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know, handsets or whatever it is. So he's far enough away that if, if he messes up, you can't smack him. <laughs> well, you can't smack him anyway. You're, uh, you're on oh, anesthesia. Drugs. So, right. yes, so, so, that's, uh, so the surgery is being operated that way. Okay. But my, my, my fear, again, I have a lot of fear with this. My fear okay. is... What if you have a disruption in your 5G network, or if you have a disruption in your uh, in your in your cloud uh, uh, you know, yeah. you know, in your cloud connection? So yeah. what happens to that? Well, we're gonna save more of this conversation, but I want to take a little break and do something weird and fun. Are you with me? Uh oh. Always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here at Lenovo Late Night IT, we think tech experts could stand to be a little better at explaining their work to the public. So we created a segment that challenges our guests to describe what they do for a living in simple terms that anybody can understand. You're gonna explain your jobs to each other as if you were on a first date. You'll each have 20 seconds to impress them, and if they like what they hear, you want a second date. It's time for Date Night IT. Are you all ready to play? Oh my gosh, yes. Who wants to go first? Uh, ladies first. Oh. oh! All right, so Stephanie, you heard the assignment in roughly 20 seconds, there's no timer. Just explain to Satya here what you do in a way that he could understand on a first date and try right. to secure a second one. Go for it. So I open up my computer and I do Google searches. I look at company websites and I tell companies what they need to do to make money, to do better, okay. to save money, to be more efficient, to be more productive. And then? And then... <laughs> They pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you look at people's watches and tell them the time? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good business. Okay. I like it's that. It's time for this. It's time for that. Mm. Don't do this. Do this. <laughs> so that was, that was you shooting your shot. I just have some outside observation. <laughs> I like that you simplified it. I Google companies and then escalated quickly to I tell them what to do and how to make more money. That was kind of a boss transition there. Satya, how did you feel about uh, Stephanie's uh, opening first date lines. I think the first part was good. Okay. I lost a little bit on the second part when you <laughs> started off with numbers. Mm. And being late night, it makes you a little drowsy. Okay, <laughs> okay. But that's... Uh, that's where that's, the coffee comes in. That's, that's where right. the coffee comes in. Yeah. All right, so we assess that. We're not going to make a decision about the second date yet. Satya, <laughs> shoot your shot. All right. I'm going to phrase it nicely. So my job is to be the, the, the demystifying officer for my leadership team so I can explain to them what technologies mean to the business. On the other side, my job is, is to inspire my team. So I have to take the role of a, of a demystifying officer here and a chief inspiring officer. And that's a real explanation for a CIO. <laughs> it's a chief inspiration officer. So I have to do both in one go. I mean, that's some pretty sweet game right there. <laughs> You're inventing titles over here, demystifying officer. Never heard of that one. And the chief inspiration officer? I give that saying, title to myself. If you don't want the second date, Stephanie, I might take you up on it. What did you think, though? This isn't about me yet. Well, it's, she didn't yawn, so that's a good no, thing. No, it was, well, I actually know way too much about your industry and your role. <laughs> would you do a date night, too, based on this interaction? Sure, with you? yeah. I shouldn't just share. I'll, I'll give yeah. him a rose. Do I give him a rose? <laughs> there you go. All right. And now we're switching metaphors. I love it. Well, thank you for playing date night IT here with us and letting it get a little awkward and a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're coming back here with Satya and Stephanie talking about edge computing. And I want to focus on the computing part um, because the idea of remote monitoring from the edge, from a distance, makes a ton of sense. But when I think about computing in the edge, I, I think about the supercomputer in my pocket and all the processing power that's in there now versus the first cell phone I ever had. My first cell phone could definitely not unlock with my face. Right. right you mentioned this example earlier. So, what are the implications of, or what are some other examples of computing at the edge in these devices that don't just listen, but act? Right. It comes down to the business value. So, uh, edge AI is actually kind of driving all of that. Mm. As machine learning increases over time, so does the power of your AI. 
and the cognitive skills that we you know spoke about right it's just amazing in terms of how those decisions are being made and not just in the manufacturing industry that also happens in the retail industry and in the uh, you know healthcare industry too yeah but they are they're not there in 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 the in the in the you know full spectrum that we would like to see them but i i get a feeling like as these workloads are being transferred from these edge servers or from the from the fog uh, uh, you know servers to uh, to more to these uh, you know edge devices you want to see the power of these devices grow um, mm. astronomically over over a period of time what's your advice for or what's your observations of even how the role of cio changes with the rise of edge computing it's a great question. I think one of the things that we've seen over the past two, three years, you were talking, we were talking about IT versus OT, is decisions. Oh, translation, OT. Information technology, IT, OT, yes. operational technology. Operational technology, okay. If you rewind it back five years ago, technology decisions were always being made by IT. Yeah. And now, um, well, some things, some, in some cases, you have departments or department leads or business managers that are going out and buying technology on their own that mm. causes friction with IT, yeah. but I think that more and more CIOs are now embracing that so that we've seen that shift now and they realize that technology is such an integral part of the entire business. It's not just, okay, technology for the end user or for our workers yeah. or uh, for our network itself. It's, it's important for all of the things that we're doing across our operations all the way to the yeah. customer experience. That's a shift. I like kind of like an ecosystem, mm -hmm. what's happening across my entire spectrum, and then who are the stakeholders, yeah. what are some of the issues and challenges, and then what information could we gather and make an act on that is critical, important, cost saving, you know, uh, saves on our production line, yeah. all of those different things, and then we think about, we cannot forget the customer. Satya, what have you seen so, in terms of how the CIO role is changing and any advice you'd have based so, on this, this transition? On a funny note, I, I chose this path. Sometimes I feel I should have just taught history. <laughs> nothing, nothing changes, the same old thing every day. But I think it, it, it is very interesting, right? When I started my career, we had to be more tech savvy mm -hmm. and maybe not as much, uh, you know, like business savviness, but then Things have changed so much. Now IT, uh, a CIO should be a business leader first, right. and then a tech leader next. Mm. And then uh, the role that I'm also donning too, right? I have different cloaks that I have to, I have to wear from time Are to time. Are you a wizard? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> sort of a wizard, but then, um, so I have to be the, the demystifying officer to my leadership team, right? I have to go and tell them, what does this technology do for us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does uh, AI do for us? What does blockchain do for us? When you have to sell the technology, you got to sell the technology with the business value. Right. Right, selling a technology for the sake of uh, selling it is not going to help. Like uh, these edge devices, sometimes you've got to go see um, uh, 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 these devices in action. Mm -hmm. When uh, uh, these, these like, you know, vendors reach out to me, right, the first thing I tell them is, can you show me a demo of this? I want to yeah. go to a, f a, 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 a you know, factory floor and I want to see these devices in action. Mm -hmm. So I can assimilate how this can help my company so I can put on that business cloak and say, yeah. as a business leader, what is this trying to solve? And I, I am happy that I'll, I'll probably retire in about 10 years time, but then, the, I, I don't know how this is going to go forward. I, yeah. I don't think the role of a CIO will exist as, uh, as much. It might become a chief information business officer or something yeah. like that, because uh, the, the CIO should have a good amount of business bent in his, in, his, in his mind to say, how is this technology going to help me out? Yeah. It's great, blockchain is great, edge, edge computing is fantastic, but how is edge computing going to help me? And by the time we actually think about it, edge computing has gone up a few more notches. Right. So it's, it's becoming a very difficult world and my advice to the CIOs is that always keep an eye on the business. See what yeah. is helping the businesses out. See what you can try to do to help solve their, uh, their, their issues. But don't bring in technology for the sake of bringing in it. It's almost like the decision making about technology in a business is shifting to the edge. <laughs> I like that. Seriously. Boom! Seriously. You're welcome! <laughs> yep. That was it. That's, I think why it. That's, that's why I'm here. We shifted a lot of our economic activity because of COVID. People sold off assets as businesses, they laid people off, they shuttered factories, and then a bunch of us out at the edge ordered a whole bunch of stuff we weren't used to ordering, so we shifted demand, and now we're coming back, and then we open and we close. What's the relationship between that level of chaos in the supply chain and any application of edge computing that might help manage that chaos? Okay, so when I think about Internet of Things, there are two core applications or solution areas that are so important, and edge is critical as part of that. Okay. And that is asset tracking and mm -hmm. monitoring 
and fleet tracking and monitoring. Okay. And when you think about the supply chain, that's the core. That's the whole game. Yeah. That is the core. And that's when am I going to get my product? Where is it? You need to know where all of those assets are yeah. and where your fleet or your trucks are or your shipping containers yeah. are. Um, if it's cold products, they're, you know, supermarket goods, Ooh, yeah. they, if that temperature drops below a certain, you know, temperature, the information on the asset and the information of the shipping container, yeah. those are real-time pieces of information that are so critical. The whole uh, like, you know, supply chain has changed. From a, from a pandemic perspective, people are starting to use more of their laptops, more of their gaming systems, mm -hmm. more of... Uh, more ring lights. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. There is more uh, pressure on uh, the manufacturing space to make sure that they, get it, they actually get it uh, done right the first time. Mm. So automation is going to be very important in those areas and I think edge comes into play into many different areas. 75% of the world's um, uh, data is coming out from these edge devices. So it's becoming more and more important that uh, these edge devices will start making a revolution. They're already starting to create a revolution among, uh, among different industries and it is going to increase over time. I'm hearing complexity. Uh, management, purchasing decisions, make versus buy decisions for a company out there and, and managing ecosystems rather than silos, you know, in terms of the business. This is happening so fast. You're trying to get out of the business in 10 years. <laughs> what do you know? I think uh, it's, um, it's all coming down to how do we manage all of this, the ecosystems uh, that, you know, Stephanie mentioned. How do we manage all of that from a security perspective? Mm. That to me is the biggest thing on my mind. As we inundate all of our environments with these uh, devices, right? How do you manage that? How do you look at the security aspects of it? Yeah. How do you make sure that somebody is not hacking into your cameras mm. and looking at your living room or your, your uh, baby in the front monitor, door? Right? Exactly. So, and now you shift that towards, uh, towards work. And how do you make sure that the products that you're making and the decisions that are being made by these edge devices are in fact true? are in fact right and it's not being manipulated, it's not being yeah. uh, tampered with. Uh, the role of security in any organization is going to go up by multiple notches, not just from uh, a purely business perspective but also from an operational technology perspective, IT, OT, the line between IT and OT is now so blur. Mm -hmm. So as that line gets more and more blurry, uh, the, the intent for us to, is, to, is to make sure that uh, we have security as paramount to all of the things that we do. So I, I want to talk more about the CIO role and anyone managing technology in a business, how does edge computing affect their infrastructure choices around data centers? How does it affect their relationship with their vendors with a more complex set of technologies like edge computing and edge devices? I think, um, like, uh, like I said, right, we're almost looking at it as a, as a, as a turnkey operation. Mm -hmm. When somebody's coming to me and selling me the worthiness of a product that is going to be helping me to improve uh, my throughput or my output within uh, my own processes, then I would want to know what makes it uh, stick out in a way where I'm not impeding uh, the operationalizing of that with my decisions that I have. I may have a, a, a you know, preference to a particular cloud or a particular uh, uh, you know, a, you know, infrastructure environment, but I want to make sure that that, is, that decision is not coming in there because today is an age of multi-cloud and multi-networked, uh, multi-infrastructure uh, you know, vendors that are, that are in my uh, like premise. So the conversation is more shifting towards, give me a turnkey solution, and I'm going to be focusing more on the functionality of that, of that, of that solution rather than the you know, technical aspects of that. Yeah. I'm not interested in the, you know, in the you know, back end of it. I'm more interested in what is it going to do to help me. Yeah. How can I make that solution more and more uh, employee friendly or more business friendly for me? So, that's why the, uh, the CIOs are not thinking technology these days. They're thinking business, and they're, they're thinking business value. They're bringing in a lot of different providers with a lot of different solutions in it, and at the, at the end of the day, it's all integrated into one system, and that's what matters to me. How I deliver my technology to my, uh, to my end customers is what matters to me at that point. It seems like a different world from back in the day where you had one provider to rule exactly. them all, right? You're right about the one vendor. And, and what's happening with a lot of the edge solutions that are out there is that they are partnering with other vendors to make it happen. Mm. So in general, an enterprise will really, they still want one throat to choke. <laughs> It's a common term that's that we great. say in the industry. That's very violent. So I you didn't might... expect that from the <laughs> IT industry. I just need somebody to murder. <laughs> that's what One I'm really person. Worried. Who do I it's murder when this all awesome. goes wrong? Okay, good. Do they need to bring in a systems integrator, mm. a consultant, uh, maybe a different hardware, or just to make it happen? Yeah. Like you said, the enterprise, they don't want 
to be, they don't want it to be complex. So they still want it to, they want to simplify right. the contract, the, the service level agreements, and the relationship itself. Yeah, and right. just, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, and it's, it's, it's just that you don't want to have one vendor for everything, right? Because you want to make sure that you, you kind of spread your risk too. Mm. If that one vendor fails, everything fails. Right. So you want to make sure that that, that partner that you're, you're, you're engaging with has uh, a good amount of uh, you know, redundancy in terms of what they do. And uh, we, we also kind of mix it up to, to make sure that uh, it's not one thing going down that brings everything down. Yeah. Right? That's, the, that's the intent of it. I just want to be very clear here. If you have been unsatisfied with your experience here on Late Night IT, uh, Sati is the road to choke. I'm, call, <laughs> I'm calling HR. His throat is closer. <laughs> I mean, we had a new sit over here. <laughs> That's it for tonight. Thanks to our guests, Stephanie Atkinson and Satya Jayadev. And thanks to all of you for hanging with us on Lenovo Late Night IT. Until next time, I'm Baratunde Thurston, reminding you that IT never sleeps and I meant to say it creepy like that.